Hi, this is Richie from Worthington Distribution. In this video, I'll show you the steps required to take the AOTech wall moat and have it work with the SmartThings hub. The wall moat is a four button remote control. It's wireless, Z-Wave, battery powered, and it can be mounted on a wall and it can be, uh, it's magnetic so it can be removed and charged with a little USB cable so it's a rechargeable battery. And it's really handy for things like lighting control. Uh, one question we get a lot with the SmartThings hub, especially as it relates to the Leviton Z-Wave lighting that comes in the kit with it, is what kind of a um, in-wall controller can be used. This is really your best bet. Um, again, totally wireless. Uh, there are four buttons on it that can each respond to either a single tap or a push and hold kind of command. So anything that can be done through the automation settings in SmartThings, rather than having to actually initiate it from the SmartThings app, you can set it so that those routines can be initiated from the wall mode, from the AOTech wall mode. So right now we're looking at the SmartThings, we're looking at the SmartThings screen here, and if we go over to the devices, I'll take you back and show you, so we're in the list of devices, and if we go down and hit the wall mode that we just added, it comes up as unknown. So the wall mode is not directly supported out of the box by SmartThings, but we're going to take you through the steps to uh, really quickly install the driver that somebody out there wrote that makes it totally compatible so we can do all this. So we're going to hop back here. First thing we need to do is to log into the API site for SmartThings. So anybody who has an account for SmartThings Hub that same account information that you log into the app with lets you log into uh, this website and it gives you some more advanced features. Um, the link for this site is in the text of the knowledge base article that we have on this so you can get it from there. So again we're gonna, we're gonna pop in our login information and go ahead and log in. First thing you want to do is look for your devices. A lot of times we'll find this where you don't see any devices in the list. The way to get around that is go back to my locations uh, click on home, it'll ask you to log in again, and now if you go to devices, we will have them. So again, we can see our, our wall mode here, and it is a type unknown, so we know that. These drivers that we're referring to in SmartThings are referred to as device handlers, and we're going to need to create a new one. So we go to create new device handler. There's a couple different ways to do it. We're going to do it from code. Now, I'm going to open up this um, notepad document I have. This is an attachment on the knowledge base article that we have. So I'm going to do Control All, or Control A for copy all. We'll copy this. We're going to go back into Smart Things and paste it. And we're going to hit Create. Now you can see that it put it all into its format. So we'll hit Save. and it's in there. So if I go to my device handlers, now we can see it. If we go back to my devices, and we now click on the wall mode, we're going to edit it. And now right here from type unknown, this is every type that SmartThings knows about. But if I scroll to the bottom of this list, I have a on wall mode. So I will update that. And it says on the top, it's been updated. We should be done now in the API login for SmartThings. So now we'll take another look at the SmartThings app. And you'll see now our wall moat in the bottom of the list. And go back into that. And now rather than saying unknown, it shows us some status. So on the top we have the battery level. It also shows up uh, in that middle ribbon there. Uh, the number it's kind of just how many times you click buttons. It'll just increment that. So you can see how many times, um, you know, since you've set it up, the buttons have been pressed, I guess, just some more, more they could put in there. And then a configure button. What we need to do first, though, is take a look in the top right. You'll see this settings cogwheel. We're going to go into that. And this is really where we can set up everything that has to do with the wall mode from a, a device standpoint. Not what you do with it, but just how it operates. So the first question is, what type of wall mode is this? We're going to set it up for a quad. That's the, uh, there will be a dual, but it's not released yet from AOTEX. So we're going to use the quad. This device is a smooth face capacitive touch. So when you touch the device, you get a, a beep. 
and um, a vibrate, kind of like a cell phone has. And that lets you know that you've actually kind of some tactile feedback to let you know you've touched the buttons. By default, they're enabled, but you can uh, disable the touch sound or the touch vibration if you'd like to. And finally, you can change the color. Um, by default, it's blue. The color is the, uh, the color that the button flashes back at you when you touch it. So we'll leave it at blue. Um, and that's it. So we'll hit done. And at that point, those settings are pushed out to the device. So now we want to go back to automation. And we want to set up some routines uh, that we can do from this. So as I said earlier, um, any routine you know, that you can add in smart things. And normally these would be things like, you know, I'm just coming home or I'm just leaving. And they just, they do a bunch of things for you, things that you would normally do. You know, you turn off all the lights, maybe set back the thermostat. You program them all in there. You can either have them execute by time or by clicking the button right here in the app. But now we have the ability to execute any of these from the Walmo, which is an actual physical device. So it's pretty cool. So we're going to add remote. Um, four buttons. The top left is button one. The t uh, top right is button two. Bottom left is button three. Bottom right is button four. That's how the layout is on this uh, wall mode. So I'm going to call this wall mode one. And let's see here. I'm going to turn on all of my Leviton uh, Z Wave devices that are connected to this hub. And then if I scroll down, this automatically perform basically means I'm just going to have a button in the app, but I'm going to change that. And I'm going to select button is pressed or held. So let me go back one and actually highlight this for you. Right here we have button is pushed or held. That's only in here because we have the Walmart with this custom device handler. So I'm going to click on that. Which button? Well, it's going to be on my Walmart. And when I hit that, Xemon says, and you can detect, or you can select which one. So I'm going to go with button number one. And then it says pushed or held. I'm just going to go with pushed. I'm going to say done. And then done again, and now it gets saved. Uh, we'll add another one for um, maybe I'll take the Walmart three and make that kind of an all off. So I'm going to say turn off these lights or switches, and I'll select all of my devices. And again, I'll come down to the bottom here, and instead of automatically perform, I want button is pushed or held. Walmart button number three this time. That's my bottom left one. Done. Done. So now if I go back to my devices here, and we look at these Leviton devices, they're all on right now. So if I press my bottom left device and my bottom left button on the Walmart, you'll see they're going off. Now, you can't see it because I don't have a camera on it, but in reality, they all went off pretty much at the same time. It just takes them a moment to write their status feedback back. Um, but I'm going to press the top left one now. And you start to see them all popping on. So it's really that easy. That custom device handler is the part that makes the uh, that makes the Walmart compatible with the SmartThings hub. And then what we're doing here is really simply the just the scenes that it operates. So that's really it. As you can see, this is a pretty quick process to make this work. Um, I do believe in the future we'll see direct support from AOTech to where you don't need to do the device handler. But as you can see, um, you know it's pretty easy to put in and it's reliable. We've been testing this for a few days, uh, left it running, and we haven't really had any issues with it. So uh, we don't have a problem recommending it and, and having you go out there and use that. So again, a real easy way to get a, a four-button, multi-button controller on the wall that uh, works with smart things. So thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at sales at worthdist.com or 800-282-8864. Thanks again.